Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley has taken issue with people who have spoken out against paying reparations to descendants of African slaves. Now, the Prime Minister, he is um, over Trinidad and Tobago. Now, he said Rowley chastised those individuals during his address to members of the public who gathered for the launch of the Emancipation Day procession at Independence Square in Port of Spain on Tuesday. I say in his speech, Riley said one historian described the sentence of enslaved as victims of an African cultural Holocaust. He said another historian suggested that there should be a middle passage plan for Africans with Europe giving reparations and say to the areas of the diaspora and said like the reconstruction designs of its Marshall plan after world war II. You know, he said that you will no doubt be familiar say with the continuing efforts and appeals in this area to the former European colonizers. He said some of the direct beneficiaries of this Holocaust prefer to write new revisions history to pretend it didn't happen. Some pat us on the shoulder to say, let's just move on. It couldn't be all that bad. He said most recently, bold faced morons and now even suggesting be grateful that the benefits that were bestowed, he said upon us by slavery, he said through language and acculturation. Now he's talking about Ron DeSantis. See what Ron DeSantis did was just really made himself look dumb. I mean, even, even brothers and sisters in the Caribbean uh, didn't, didn't heard about his idiotic behavior. So the president, prime minister said that, however, that despite Europe's calculated attempts at dehumanizing us, that there was always resistance. He said as CLR James, one of Trinidad and Tobago's foremost literary, oh Lord, foremost literary figures concluded African slaves fought back powerfully with the continents on their minds. So the memories, the logic, and the resilience of their people. So I speak proudly today that what James identified some 80 years ago continues to be realized. It's the inner contributions of citizens of Trinidad and Tobago to the world stage. So you now, because of the fight of reparations and what we have been pushing, it has caught fire all over the world. And that's a beautiful thing. You know, one thing that some black people need to realize here in America that God has bestowed upon us to take a lead on a lot of things. And because he has bestowed upon us that particular leadership, you know, some people don't like that. Some people get jealous about that. Some people get downright angry about that because they say, why not them? Well, I will say this. If you want to have the voice and you want to take the leadership role and you can wear the crown and, and all the pain that come along with that crown. And, and, and from what I have seen with some of you, you would not want that crown because you'd be willing to give it back so quick because the pain is too great. You understand? So when we talk about reparations, listen, if we can get reparations, that means the Caribbean will get reparations. That means, uh, uh the African continent will get reparations. Afro-Latinos will get reparations. Man, look, reparations should be something that everybody should support. Just like when apartheid was going on down there in South Africa, black Americans wasn't down for no apartheid. You know, we, we definitely pushed our government to uh, boycott South Africa, to divest from South Africa because of the apartheid government. And that apartheid government is no more. Now, of course, you got the remnants of apartheid. And yes, a lot of the wealth is still in the hands of the folks, but you know, things are changing. I'm pretty sure a lot of you have saw the video with our brother Julius Malema at FNB Stadium, had about 100,000 people uh, singing an apartheid song at the time period for struggle. And it was just, you know, when I seen that, I'll say, wow. I said, look at the energy in there. And I, I've been by FNB Stadium actually more than once uh, out there to uh, uh, Soweto. And uh, like I said, shout out to the brothers and sisters of Soweto and Johannesburg, you know, Cape Town, all y'all brothers and sisters. You know what I mean? I love South Africa. That's one of my favorite countries, you know. Um, and and y'all actually have a um, easier way to actually uh, come and stay there. Definitely on that retirement uh, uh, visa uh, that, that you can get on to go stay there. You know, I always tell people South Africa should be the first country you start off with anyway, because you know, it's, it's still, it's kind of similar to what you're used to in the West, but it's not the West. You understand? And, uh, you know, we definitely support our brother Julius Malema. You know, he, he out there fighting for freedom and, and you know, some people complain about, you know, brother Malema and saying, you know, he's a politician. Y'all don't know him and this and that and the third, and you know, no man's perfect. 
No woman is perfect. You know, yes, we know he's a politician, but right now he's definitely got the ear of the people. He calling out these white supremacists on a global stage. Nobody else has that, that voice in, that, in the ear of the pe people throughout the world right now, and definitely throughout the diaspora. So, you know, some may not like that Brother Malema is the, is the one, but hey, he's the one for the day. And, um, you know, I'm definitely always going to be supportive of, of what that brother says. He, he is no nonsense. You know, like I say, he definitely had one or two missteps, in my opinion, that I've seen. But I can't allow those missteps to overshadow the, the, the good things that this brother is pushing. Um, and I always say, if you had more and more leaders like Julius Malema, you know, on the continent, they say we, the continent wouldn't have those issues and problems. It, it wouldn't, you know, whatsoever. So, you know, let me know what y'all think. You know, about, you know, this situation here, uh, uh, what, what the brothers is definitely talking about in Trinidad and Tobago. Yes, the Caribbean owed reparations because they were put in slavery too. Now, they owe reparations to their colonial masters. Not, not this one here because I, you say, see, Brother Phil said we owe reparations. Yes, you are. And you need to get it from France, from Spain, from the British. That's the three colonizers that, that, uh, that, that owe, you, owe you reparations, and you need to get every dime, every dime. 